Okay, recently Darren Miles, Darren Miles Photography asked me uh, about the Fuji X-T1 saying you heard a lot of great things about it. The Fuji X-T10 is a better value. My Nikon stuff is not going anywhere. Um, I'd suggest that anybody give you the X-T10 or the X-T1 a kick on the tires. It's hard to explain actually what this camera is to give it connotation or perspective relative to what someone else is using but the camera is made in Japan it has uh, one single contiguous uh, solid magnesium chassis right now I've got the vertical grip on this obviously so it's uh, smaller uh, the camera alone but I'm a total vertical grip slut but trying to give a proper analogy or relationship to uh, why I think this camera is is really I always knew that it was very hotly beloved and then uh, people hear that also, just like Darren Miles did. He said, well, I kept hearing all this positive stuff, but I, you know, I haven't tried one yet. And uh, it's kind of hard. I was trying to give proper analogy to what would define it compared to what someone else might have. If you were to mate an old Nikon FM2, uh, which is a very slim little camera. This is even slimmer, of course, much, much more slim with uh, the rugged durability and, and integrity of one of my favorite cameras in the world and these are never going to go anywhere and the Nikon D3 then you would come up with the offspring of that which would be the uh, the Fuji uh, X-T1 um, the interface, the uh, ergonomics, the, uh, the intuitive design uh, the build quality is absolutely phenomenal. It's it's so lightweight. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. Of course, I've got an additional battery on here right now with a vertical grip. The vertical grip itself is actually very lightweight, but of course, you toss another battery in there, then that ad adds, you know, the batteries are not that large, but it does add a significant amount of weight. But um, I can actually say, and I've worked in three camera stores, and I've had thousands and thousands of cameras pass through my hands. I've personally repaired... God knows how many hundreds and hundreds, what means not hundreds, actually, it's well over a thousand cameras that I've repaired. And uh, actually defining it as something in particular is kind of hard. I would actually kind of uh, define it as a, a very inexpensive but equally high quality Leica camera that is far more intuitive and easy to use. And the viewfinder on the X-T1 which is just a, uh, a, uh, a bit bigger than the X-T10, but it is, uh, it is significantly bigger. I mean, every other camera out there, doesn't matter if it's Leica, uh, doesn't matter if it's Olympus, uh, Nikon, Canon, Sony, everything out there is like looking through a toilet paper tube. And the Fuji X-T1, it's like this. It's like looking through the porthole of a ship. Now, it is a 16 megapixel uh, uh, sensor. It does have absolutely incredible output. Now, the only negative output that uh, people will talk about about this camera is because they're used to using Nikon or Canon. They'll switch over to Fuji and they'll start using Lightroom for it. But this camera should not be uh, used for raw conversion using Lightroom. Lightroom still absolutely sucks for doing uh, Fuji raw conversion. You need to use uh, Capture One or Iridian. Uh, Photo Ninja is a third runner-up as far as best uh, Fuji uh, converter. There is a, uh, a Fuji uh, free converter available from Fujifilm. It's called Silky Pix, and it's free from Fuji. Um, but the camera build, fit and finish, um, it, it's hard to actually define. I mean, if Voigtlander made a, a really high-quality, durable camera, it would be this. Of course, it's made by Fuji, of course. The actual ecosystem of the camera, as far as its lenses, and of course Fuji, the Fujinons have been around, uh, of course they've been spitting out glass for, you know, many decades now, so, you know, they had the glass down already. And uh, I would rate the glass on the uh, Fuji ecosystem, the Fuji uh, X-Trans uh, glass as uh, well above that of uh, G-Series Nikkors, and uh, slightly below that of a Voigtlander, and as I've told you many times, that Voigtlander is a spit out of Casina, and it's 100% identical in fit, finish, and quality to a Zeiss. So, we're talking about right underneath Zeiss and well above a G-Series Nikkors in build quality. Now, optics, of course, are something different. Um, 
overall, even though Fuji doesn't have a tremendous amount of lenses like either Canon or Nikon has, um, their uh, zooms are absolutely incredible. Their uh, even their cheap junky kit. When I say junky, I mean it's a it's a cheap little lens. It's their little kit lens, the 16 to 50. But like their 18 to 55 is exquisite. Their 10 to 24 is exquisite. Um, their newest lens, the 35 millimeter f/2, is an absolute must-have. Uh, no questions asked. Um, I can't remember the exact pixel pitch on uh, the sensor and the uh, Fuji X-T1, but I think it's somewhere right above uh, a Nikon D7000 pixel pitch, but uh, I can't remember that specifically. Um, but you should go to your camera store and know, I said, I'm, I'm not switching from anything. If anybody thinks that I'm like switching systems, I mean, they've lost their mind. I'm just grabbing a print over here out of picture. I'm not switching to anything. I mean, it is an accessory. It's an ancillary system. To be used in conjunction with my Nikons uh, because of what it is, especially as a little candid camera, uh, street, uh, travel. Um, we all know the limitations of mirrorless. Um, I'm not interested, nor do I care about TTL flash photography, although they, I have uh, worked in combination with METS to roll out a TTL speed light. I'm not even interested in that. I've got tons of speed lights that I could use this on. and I don't plan on using it as a sport slash action uh, camera. However, they've drastically improved that and it is uh, really damn good for that unless it's really hardcore fast moving action in which case it's not the preferable camera. You know, uh, both of these are uh, the best camera in the world and neither one of these is the best camera in the world. I mean, it's the right tool for the right job. You know, it's the same reason you don't take steel, steel tools on a uh, oil, oil, uh, oil uh, rig uh, to uh, repair stuff. I mean, it rusts and the sparking can actually cause an explosion. So, it's about the right tool for the right job. But what it is is absolutely exquisite. Um, and of the many thousands of cameras that have slipped through my fingers, you know, and I've been shooting Nikon for well over 25 years. And my Nikon stuff is going nowhere, okay? The ecosystem and the lenses and everything else, is, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't even, not even at gunpoint would I consider my Nikon stuff going anywhere. So don't, you know, I, I'm tired and sick of hearing this stuff. He's switching sides or he's betraying Nikon. You know, I'm not, you know, I have, a, I only have a love for what's logical and what's good, high build quality, and what fits the bill as far as build quality, ergonomics. Um, user interface, fit, finish, and one thing that uh, Fuji has over Canon or Nikon is that the little companies, and it's not little by any means, Fuji has a strong, uh, very strong uh, business in uh, selling uh, medical uh, professional equipment, uh, optics and whatnot, um, but they have to actually overachieve in what they produce compared to Nikon. I mean, the big giants can take huge hits. Um, but the smaller companies and what they roll out cannot and so they have to overachieve in everything that they produce and that is where you really uh, reap the advantage um, but if you think 16 megapixels is not enough uh, then you're a pixel peeping uh, you're a pixel peeping lunatic that spent too much time over on that satanic website to DxO mark I mean this is a 12 megapixel 600 dpi sample from the Nikon D3 which is only a 12.1 megapixel camera. If you think, that's a 13 by 19 print by the way, if you think 16 megapixels is not enough then I suggest that you're smoking some sort of illegal substance that was harvested in Colombia uh, by some drug lord. <laughs> um, so give one a test uh, down at your uh, local camera store. I'm not suggesting you buy it or anything for crying out loud but you know, uh, give, you know give someone a buck or two to borrow it for a day or go down to the camera store and you know, throw a lens on it and fiddle around with it, and I think you'll actually be very, very surprised. Um, I've actually never seen, and uh, this is with no doubt, and I have played with a lot of Leica cameras too, so I mean, it's not like I've just been scrolling, scrolling around with Sony, Nikon, and Canon. I've actually never seen a camera with uh, manual interfaces that is so perfectly integrated to be also used uh, strictly as a button-pushing 
digital uh, SLR. I mean, it has a perfect seamless integration where the two are not fighting against each other, thereby causing uh, user uh, intellectual uh, retardation. And by that, I don't mean in a uh, in a funny sense, but where it actually conflicts with the flow of uh, the workflow of uh, of taking photography. There are a lot of poorly executed half manual half automatic digital cameras that have old uh, dials on the top for shutter speed and ISO and uh, exposure comp but they never work perfectly well either digitally or manually and uh, some really really smart SOBs at uh, Fuji and I say that in a, an affectionate way really did hit a uh, home run. I've actually never seen such a smooth uh, integration uh, between the two as uh, I have on the Fuji X-T10 and X-T1 and uh, right now it's on sale until the end of December if you're thinking about grabbing one as well as a lot of their lenses are on a big time sale some of them a lot more than others some of them are $300 off on their lenses so you got a limited time uh, to give it a test drive oh by the way a manager of a local uh, camera store here, and I talk to him all the time, and he always tells me the truth. You know, I, uh, I'm buddies with him, and uh, he said the stuff that's been moving out the door recently, hot and heavy, is Canon has not moved anything. If you think that the Canon stuff is collecting, they haven't sold anything in Canon. I mean, they've sold a few things, but I mean, it's basically been sitting there collecting dust. Sony hasn't been selling anything, and they're selling all the high-end Sony stuff, including the A7R2 and uh, several other lenses. And Nikon stuff has just been flying out the door at a record pace, and this guy has been doing this job, which I, I almost feel sorry for him. I mean, I shouldn't say that because it's kind of deriving. Mean, because retail work is tough. Working with the public is just a pain in the crotch. But he has been doing that job in that same photography store for God over 20 years and he said he's never seen so much Nikon stuff fly off the shelf and a close runner up to that which even surprised me having three Fuji uh, cameras he said the Fuji is a close second runner up the Fuji stuff is flying out the door and uh, you know this is truthful from him I mean he's you know this is a guy that's always gonna tell me the truth you know uh, I'm not buying anything from him, and I've known him for decades. So this is a uh, you know undeniable fact, and this guy's been doing it for 20 years. So anyway, you should give the Fuji XT1 a test drive. You know, finger it at your local uh, camera store and uh, see what I'm talking about. Because most people look at it it's like that's ah, a Fuji, you know. I'm not gonna pick that up. Well, why don't you give it a pick up? I mean, it's not gonna cost you anything for Christ's sake. So why not do it? All right, bye.